Hey everyone and welcome back to the Purposeful Mindset Podcast. I'm honestly so grateful that you're subscribed to my podcast and I'm excited to share yet another episode with you. This podcast is all about bringing servant leaders to share their stories and life experiences with you all in the hopes to help more people to find their true purpose and meaning to life. Today, I have an amazing guest. I'm super pumped to bring him on. His name is Max Hindu, and he helps millennials design and align their life by reprogramming their subconscious mind using hypnotherapy, NLP, mindfulness, and meditation. After going through anxiety, depression, and a lot of trauma in his life from a young age, he made the conscious decision to want to help people. But first, he knew that he needed to change himself. And after three years of healing, studying and learning, he set out to start coaching others on how he went from self-destruct to complete self-respect. If someone who was on drugs, around violence and had so much hate towards their sober self can change, then he can help you change too. In this episode, Max shared how personal development can shift your mind to a whole new space and way of thinking and how his work in hypnotherapy has helped him tap into his subconscious mind, allowing room for constant growth and positive change. So without further ado, let's get straight into this episode. Max, thank you so much for being with me on the Purposeful Mindset podcast, man. I am so grateful to have you on the show and I literally can't wait for you to introduce yourself. We're going to have so much banter on this episode. We're going to have so much fun and jokes because the way we connected, just to let my listeners know, is we found, well, we, yeah, we found each other through TikTok, right? And we yeah. saw each other's content. We start like, you know, supporting each other. And then we start following each other on Instagram and we start getting to know each other much better. But man, like I was just like, I constantly saw you on my For You page and I was like, this dude is <laughs> rinsing it. Like his content is everywhere. Every time I open TikTok, he's the first one I see. So um, <laughs> man, like, I, I loved what you were doing, man. I loved, the, I loved the messages you were sharing. Loads, like almost everything you shared is pretty much stuff that I've learned in my own journey. Um, so it was super, super cool. And, um, and yeah, man, I want you to introduce yourself to everyone else. And, like, I wanna, and then I'm going to go straight into like your story and stuff, man. 100%. So I'm, I'm Max Hindle, I'm 22, and my story, I'm sure we'll go into that a, a bit um, in more depth, but my story was a lot of coming from what I say is self-destruct to self-respect because I was in such a bad place where I was um, abusing a lot of drugs, alcohol, didn't like myself, didn't really care about anything other than can I get paid, can I spend it on some drugs? That was literally what I cared about. Then I started to really get bad depression, anxiety, and things like that, self-inflicted from the drugs. So again, that was my own fault. But a lot of that stuff has taught me to and grown me into the person I am today. And I, I look at all that stuff and I'm like, without them struggles, and one of my favorite quotes is, um, rock bottom will teach you something a mountaintop never will. And it really was. It was so painful for me that it wasn't like, mm, do I want to change? It was sort of like, no, Max, you need to change because otherwise you're going to screw up your whole life. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's what I've got to do. So how can I change? And now... Five six, uh, six, five, six years in advance, I now am a hypnotherapist. I use NLP. Um, I do a lot of meditation, mindfulness, things like that. And I really use the power of the subconscious mind to completely transform and change people's lives, which I've had uh, people working with smoking, weight loss, anxiety, things like that. That's what I like to do. I like to focus on anxiety because I had it myself. And eventually is to reach a lot of people and create a movement of happy and fulfilled people. I love it, man. I love it. And that's exactly what you're doing, man, with all the content that you're putting out there. It's constantly just inspiring people. You're having fun. You're, you know, you're just being yourself. You're keeping it so real. That's one of the things that really resonated with you is because you were just keeping it real. I know you were just being yourself. And it's so hard to find just normal, genuine people like that online now because everybody is trying to be so professional, you know. Everybody's trying to be that scripted TEDx talker, you know, speak person, right? <laughs> like they're trying to be that robot. And it doesn't work. Like you just have like you genuinely just have to be yourself. And and I believe in that because I've done it for the past since I started making content. And as for the listeners and everyone else that knows me right now, like they know like every platform they go on, I'm the same guy with the same energy, with the same like goodness that I'm spreading because I you know I'm I'm passionate about about what I do. I love helping people. And just like you, man, I want to put out content out there because you just never know whose life you can change. So really, exactly. really, um, really cool what you're doing, man. But go, I, I, want to, I want to ask you, I want to ask you like what, what actually got you started in like personal growth? Because that's something that made me really curious when I 
I, did, I never yeah. got to, I obviously have a conversation with you properly and this is the first conversation mm-hmm. you're probably having. So. <laughs> yeah. so when we did the live the other day, I remember you saying that you got involved in network marketing. That was exactly one of the first things I started doing. Yeah. Um, I originally started my, someone I knew gave me the book, The Secret. And that was sort of my first look into a better life because I've grown up around no really successful people, no, not really very many happy people. So I was like, okay, what can I learn from something outside of me to, to do that? And The Secret was the first book that I ever read uh, leaving school. And I really struggled to read. I, I really only just started picking up my reading over these la- this last year because I really wanted to improve my reading ability and things like that. But that was the first book I read. And I read that cover to cover. And I was like, that was actually a really easy read. And I love all those concepts in it. So that opened me up to personal development and law of attraction. I was like, so if I think about it, I can have it. Right, that's it. Right, all a million pounds. No, nope, it doesn't work <laughs> that, like that. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee that's probably everyone's first thing when they hear the law of attraction. Oh, if I can think it, I'm going to have it. Um, and so, so that was my first thing. Then I came across Tony Robbins. And I will say this for everyone. I know there's one day that I say I'm going to meet him. I've already messaged him. I've left that message there so that that day that I meet him and I work with him, I can say, look, I knew I was, this was going to happen. I knew I was going to get there. And I started watching his content and I've watched every single Tony Robbins video on YouTube back day in years because I just love all of his stuff. Started reading his books and he really got me into the power of being more positive as a person. Uh, getting into meditation, improving your health, improving your mindset, things like that. And I was like, right, this guy is who I want to be. How can I be like that? And fast, I'll rewind five, six years ago, I was the type of person I'd be sitting there like that. No, I don't want to speak to someone. I, I'm, I'm, relate, I'm sure I can someone. relate. Yeah. And I know, I noticed you said in your TEDx talk, you were saying this cute guy, <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was a shy person. And it's funny because so many people think, and I thought I looked at Tony Robbins, I was like, there was no way he was ever shy. He was like, I was, it was like, I was a mess. I was depressed. I was like, there's no way, but now I can see it and I can really feel it, feel it and empathize with it because I know what it's like to be that person. And it really is just about the little things. And I love Pareto's Loris. You do um, 80 or 20% of the work and you get 80% of the result. Mm. And that really is personal development. The, the more you take, or if you just go all in and you just start taking different principles from different types of people, you're going to get an all round version of who you want to be. So fast forwarding a little bit from my original personal development with Tony Robbins, I went into network marketing, got a mentor, things like that. And then things really started to escalate from there. And that's when I started to get more into meditation, um, improving my fitness, my health. And then it really started to take off. And then I had loads of different things go on. It's awesome, man. And and you know what? Like for those people out there listening, like honestly, I think network marketing is actually a really cool industry to start off with if you don't have any business experience, if you don't have any mm. mentors, if you don't know anything about business, it's one of the best ways to go and actually learn because the companies, if you find a good company, the personal growth system and the events help you so much mm-hmm. to grow as a person to 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 genuinely change your mindset. And that's what it did for me because I was in it for five years, as most of the people that know me. I did it for five years. I was super serious. I never made it massively big in it. I never made it successful, but I successfully changed my, my life from my mindset, mm-hmm. which for me was mm-hmm. the success from that. And through, through doing that and through speaking at some of those events is when I genuinely found my passion and my, mm-hmm. my true life purpose, which was to be a speaker in, in something yeah. that I've done and lived in my life. And that's why. Like, and that's the thing. If you never went into network marketing, you wouldn't have found that. So it's not like, no. it's not like you, like, and some people will go, oh, but you did it for five years and you failed. And you're like, no, not at all. Not at all. Because I learned so much that it projected me into this. And likewise, exactly the same for myself. If I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't be so involved in personal, personal development, personal mm-hmm. growth. I wouldn't have met some people that I've met that I've now stayed good friends with through network marketing. So I, I think 100% I agree with you. If you want to learn business, start there because you're investing a bit of money into something and you're investing your time. And time's the biggest thing. If, you could, if you're willing to invest a lot of time, which I can imagine you did and I know I did, it shows how your dedication to your success. Yeah, 100%, man. I totally agree because... But you know what the thing is, Max? Like Most people that we know today, they just... They have so much time, but they still love to use the busy line. You know, like, I'm so busy and stuff. And I, it really annoys me because I'm just like, nobody is really that busy, man. Like, just, just not. We know this because we've, like, we've 
we've put in the hours and we've put in so much hustle and grind and and work into like finding our purpose and doing something that we love right now but even us man like come on let's just be real like we have we all have 24 hours i still mm. work full time if I, like and again most people that know me they see that how do i work full time and do this speaking stuff and do all this content mm. and all of this myself no no team like gary v you know there's no mm. team is everything sadix doing everything podcast yeah. and work you know content every single platform youtube like everything how does one do it it's just and I, I tell people don't compare yourself with me mm. someone asked me yesterday oh, at the time of this podcast like they messaged me on, on instagram just asking me um uh basically like how uh, how do you prioritize time because i do so much i'm like well because i do so much i prioritize my time mm, mm, mm. and because i prioritize yeah, yeah. my time i actually have spare time yeah because yeah. i do yeah, yeah, things definitely. in the time i need to do things and when i don't that's my time to just chill yeah exactly exactly and and that's really interesting actually what you said because we're coming from so my background isn't like solidly working i have a bit more of a I, i'd say i'm very blessed and very lucky to be in the position that i am but i've sacrificed so much and when i say so much quarantine for me and when people say they don't have time quarantine is a perfect time to stop yeah <laughs> but quarantine for me realistically is my everyday life and it's, it's interesting because I sacrificed not going out. I, I don't drink anymore. I don't, I don't smoke. I don't, I don't do anything like that because of who I, what I used to be like. And I just don't really want to get back you into that. You just drink mango juice, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what's with the mangoes, by the way? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but what's with the mangoes? I want to know the mango story, man. You love I mangoes. Love, I love mangoes. Nothing ever. I, Guys, this I, guy I, loves, I loves mangoes. mangoes. Like you see mango in a video of him every single day. The same way you guys remember me and Dr. Arya talked about the bananas and how much he loved bananas. This guy loves mangoes. <laughs> I, I literally, I've got, I looked in my freezer earlier. I've got, I think six or seven bags of frozen oh, mango and then like six mangoes on the side. <laughs> oh, what's the story with the mangoes? I don't know. I just love them. Absolutely love them. Best fruit ever, ever invented. If if I could eat one thing for the rest of my life, mangoes, one hundred percent, absolutely. Love I them. love mangoes too, but you, not like you. You love it. You're on another level. <laughs> I'll sit there and I'll literally skin. I'll skin it off the. Um, the yeah, trust me, man. We've seen. <laughs> we've seen the videos. We've seen the magic videos of you chucking them in the bowl and everything. <laughs> it's brilliant. No, I love mangoes. Um, but what, what 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 was the question that you asked me? Um, about like prioritizing time and you said quarantine that's it, that's for it. you was um was yeah so I have sacrificed a hell of a lot over my the last three or four or five years where I've had no money and when I say no money I mean literally no money like my business generates me enough to live just um so I'm in a very still in quite an up and down uh, place and with with the business it's getting there but it's still in a very early stage of business which I'm very lucky that I've got mentors that help me out in business and stuff like that um but I was willing to stop drinking. So people would be like, oh, Max, come out for a beer. And this was before I um, was really involved in what I'm doing now. And I'd be like, no, I was like, I've got no money. Like, and it was a good excuse at the time. So I didn't want to get involved in what I, was, uh, what I used to be doing. But it then progressed me where people are like, oh, but you've got all the time in the world. And I was like, yeah, but you're not willing to not go out and see your friends every day. So I haven't seen any of my friends from school for over four or five years now. Um, you're, you're not willing to... Um, go out and or not drink on the weekends. I haven't done that for two years now. And I don't do it for the sheer fact. That's for me. That's not saying that I'm doing it the right way. It's for me, it's the right way. For anyone else, they've got to choose their way of doing it. But when people say I've got the enough time to do it, I say, yeah, but I still will work from, I'll get up at five, six in the morning. I'll, I'll usually, obviously not in quarantine, I'll go to the gym for about six. I'll get home for about nine. Then I'll work from about half nine, 10 o'clock till anywhere up to, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, whenever, whenever I need to work till. And I'm happy to do that. So it's about prioritizing what's right for you specifically as a person, because we're all different. Mm -hmm. And if you're, cause I'm, I'm personally, a lot of people think I'm extroverted. I'm very introverted. I'm happy to sit on my own and do my own things. I, I, I I'm from assumptions. I'm assuming you're a bit more extrovert and you like to, to be around a lot of people. Or would you say that that's not, not pretty correct? much like you, man? I'm actually introverted. Um, oh, really? My I'm friend just... actually said to me the other day, like, because I was, uh, we were talking, we were having this conversation, and I was like, you know what, man? <laughs> like, uh, people see me as extroverted because obviously I'm super confident, <laughs> I'm out there, I love people. <laughs> but realistically, like, I just like just being alone and, and doing work and <laughs> just, just chilling out. 
don't get me wrong. I'm like, I'm so basically he said, so you're, so he said to me that apparently there's such thing as an introverted ex- ex- extrovert. I, I'm the other way around, I, I believe. An extroverted introvert. Ah, okay. So basically, I, 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 I prefer being like, I, I prefer just, you know, I can happily just sit at home and uh, not sit at yes. home, but I can happily just be by myself and just do some work and just relax and yeah. chill and, and still mm-hmm. work hard and be productive. But, um, but at the same time, I still love being around people. I st- still love mm. you know, all of that kind of vibe and positivity. It's just, yeah. I, it's just negativity. I don't like being around, of course. I, I 100%. <laughs> I'll, I'll run from that <laughs> that's why we connect so well because we're both on the same vibe there it's just like positivity everywhere actually that's something I want to add in I never used to be that positive the reason I was so positive was because Tony Robbins biggest inspiration forever worthy to that man and, and great for that man he was saying he was looking at like uh, he would be saying things I'd be listening and it would be like you need to be grateful for the stuff that you've got you need to try and be positive and I was like I've got nothing to be positive for I was like, what can I be grateful for? Can I? Okay, I've got a car. I've got a car. Brilliant. All right, let, let me start there. And I literally, not, not a special car, literally a polo. And I was like, what, how can I be? Right, that's it. I can drive a car. That's brilliant. And over time, it now progressed to, I could, my car cost me over 1,200 pounds the other day to fix. I was like, oh, oh, that's a bit of a nightmare. I could have gone nuts saying, I don't really have that money to pay for it, but I found the money. I got it. Not a problem. Yes, it's, it's put me short a little bit, but I'm, I'm just looking at it like things could be worse. I could literally be dying right now. I'm not. I'm perfectly fine. Like, it's really his perspective. And that's one of the biggest things I try to push on people is perspective. Because even in hypnotherapy alone, when you start to change your perspective, everything changes. If you see a specific situation as something that's going to bring you anxiety, you change your perspective around that situation. And this is on a subconscious level. It's going a bit deeper that's when everything will change. And I've done this myself. And I've had times where I'm not a massive fan of big crowds, but I can now happily go and stand in one and do what I need to do. If I need to have a conversation with someone, I'll happily do that. Whereas before it was like, oh, I don't really want to go. Don't want to do it. But now I'm just like, all right, if I do it, I've got to do it. I'm, uh, make the best of a bad situation sort of thing. If it's something that I don't like to do, I'll try and find my way to do it that will suit me best. Yeah. No, I love that. And I, but the one thing that you said that really hit me, and uh, I think that would help a lot of people, is perspective. You know, mm-hmm. that just having perspective in our life and seeing things from different angles just really makes mm-hmm. a big difference. Because sometimes, yes, we do tend to just judge people straight just by seeing them or from seeing their videos or, um, you know, knowing a little bit about them and straight away making an assume, assuming um, that we know them, right? Mm-hmm. One, my, one of my most... Literally, one of my, the, the, the biggest viral video on, on TikTok for me was the one I was talking about. Nobody knows you. Like, nobody mm-hmm. knows how you feel. Yes, nobody, knows how, nobody knows how you feel. Nobody knows how, what you're thinking. Nobody knows anything mm-hmm. about you apart from yourself. And when I shared that video, I don't know how, but it obviously emotionally hit so many people that it went viral. And mm-hmm. like, it really, when I was constantly, obviously looking back at that video, I was like, there's a reason why this video helped so many people because on that day I was just feeling it man I was just like freaking passionately was like because you know I have so many conversations with people that sometimes I feel helpless like they they're stuck in a in a in a really tough situation in their life and I can't help them genuinely like I I physically cannot help them but I can only share like some some positive emojis and some positive words through a message just to try to encourage them to stay positive that's the most I can do because I don't know them they're strangers that reach out to me but, I, but yeah. I still take the time to, you know, help people and to just add value into their life and I'm see what I can enough. do. And, um, and yeah, man, perspective for me was, it's so important for us to just realise mm. and be grateful for, for what we have. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's one of the best things that gave me perspective personally, I believe, was travelling because mm. I used to run a digital marketing agency and we started to make a bit of money and, and it was the first business that I've started over 10 businesses in the past. Like every one of them just went... <laughs> <laughs> it just went awful. That's good um, though, man. That's what made oh, 100%. You, that's what hundred yeah. percent made you you, you so resilient. It. Yeah, definitely. And I started this digital marketing. Me and my business partner, we we had a bit of uh, troubles with it. We started to make a bit of money, and we were like, "This is actually going to go somewhere." And I was connecting with a lot of people in the digital marketing space, and I was knowing people. Like I know people now that have made millions in in a very short period of time. And I was like, if I would have stuck at it, I would have made that million. So I was like, but it wasn't for my purpose. It wasn't my purpose. Um, it was making other people money and I, that's not personally what I want to do right now my thing is to help uh, people get out of a bad place 
So after doing that, I, we sort of had a bit of a, a, a realization, a recollection between us. And I said, I was like, look, I need to go. I'm going traveling. I went out to Bali for a couple of months. Um, my plan was to go and live out in Bali. I wanted to start a retreat and stuff like that. And that was when I went from only business to only spiritual. And that's when I was like, right, that's it. I'm not picking up the business book again. I'm closing that book. That's gone. And I didn't want to pick it back up. That's what Bali does to you, right? <laughs> no, this is before I went to Bali. Oh, okay. Uh, so then I went to Bali and really enjoyed myself. I had an absolutely amazing time. And while I was there, I actually thought about, I don't know if you've heard of ayahuasca before. I have, yeah. I've heard, I've, yeah. I've, 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 I don't know too much, but I have definitely heard of some of the people I've connected with. I've told me about it. Okay, interesting. I'll explain it another time to you because it's a very, very deep story about what happened um, or, or what it is. But basically, while I was in Bali, I, I said I was like, I could have gone to Thailand on the way back. And I was like, oh, actually, I've wanted to go and do ayahuasca for a while. So how about I book a, um, an ayahuasca experience in February? So that's, this was February of 2019. And I was like, okay, let me do it. Let me go for it. Booked it. That's when then I went to Peru, went to do the ayahuasca, went out there on my own, completely literally in the mountains on my own. And when I say it's because obviously I don't take drugs, it's a psychedelic, but it's, it's a really, like you've got to respect it. It's a really serious thing. Like it's not just something you could just do with your friends and expect to be okay. Cause I had a really traumatic experience and it literally felt like my body was coming out of my mouth and I was just, it was really traumatic. But when I came out of my experience, I was laying, I was like, do you know how grateful I am just to be able to move my own body? Because I had no control over my body, my thoughts. I generally went completely insane. I was, I was screaming at the top of my voice. I went insane. I was so grateful to be able to think straight. I was like, oh. I was just like, it was sort of like a new, like a, re, a mm. rebirth sort of thing. I came back from there and that's when I started connecting more with my mentor who helped, helped me out in business. And then he was encouraging me to go, go get some qualifications. And that's where I'd been helping people for the past year or two before, um, not really qualified to do what I did. It was just more like I helped them with meditation. I helped them with uh, how I stayed so positive, how I'm so happy, things like that. He encouraged me to go and get hit with, the, uh, encouraged me to, uh, he wanted me to get a degree. And I was like, I'm not getting a degree. I don't want to do it that way. But that's why I went to NLP, then which led me to hypnotherapy, and now I'm doing transactional analysis. So I'm constantly broadening my horizon with different types of therapy, so I can really help people. And the therapies alone, this is now allowing me to help people through a screen. Especially, I can do it like we're doing right now. Like it's very easy for me to do, and I hypnotize people all the time, and it's really simple because I know how to do it. And if I wasn't pushed back into the business world, if I didn't have that mentor there. I would have been a bit stranded, but I do believe things come at the right time. Because the past five years, I've been looking for mentors for ages everywhere. Mm. I spoke to over five or six different people and I'd give them business plans. I'd, I'd ask them for advice and things like that. And it just wasn't coming together. And then eventually it happens just as I needed it. And again, that is how, that's how the law of attraction works. Yeah. You're in a place where you're like, you need it, but you don't express how much you need it i was sort of mm. in a place where i'm like i'm good i'm doing well I, I'm, I'm doing well like mentally i'm in a really good place but what what could happen if something something else just altered that and that's when it really kicked in and it really allowed me to become my best self and it's allowed me to expand myself it's allowed me to dive deeper into the business world and things like that so i'm still on a journey don't get me wrong i've not even scratched the surface i'm still still only on the first step but this is what I believe the building block is the most important thing. So the past five years, no, no one's going to see that. No, nope. they're going to see some videos, but they're not going to see the past five years where I haven't had any money. When I mean no money, like no money at all. I haven't been able to pay for my car. I haven't been able to do this. I haven't been able to do that. I, I haven't even been able to. I remember one time I was at a point where I had to drink protein shakes every day for a week because I had no money for food. And we were in a bad situation with my family um, after basically my dad attacked my mum and just pretty much cut our family, uh, cut our family in half. We lost all of our um, family or half our family. And then my mum, we had no money. My sister, we had no, we were really struggling. And that was just a really tough time. For me. But like I say, it couldn't get worse. And I remember getting to a day in my life and I, Tony Robbins, the biggest story that stuck with me from Tony Robbins was he was saying, he went out for a meal one day, had no money. And he saw a kid and he was really like just blown away by the kid of how polite he was, how observant he was to his mum, and being really nice and just such a kind kid. And he said he took all of the money out of his pocket, which he had was $17 or something like that. And he gave it to the kid and that's it. That was all his money. And he said, right, I want you to pay for your, he, it, a big story, but it's basically long story short, he paid for the kids uh, to, to pay for his meal. 
And I was like, I love that story. And I was on my way home from a run once. I literally had 20 pounds to my name. That was it. I was running back and I went into Tesco's, bought some food and I had 17 pounds left. And I was like, that's a coincidence. I was like, right, I'm just going to do it. Whoever's behind me is getting all their food for free. So I just chucked the money behind the counter and I was like, look, just pay for their food. And, and she was like, no, you can't do that. I was like, no, it's fine. And when I say I ran home, I flew home. I was so high off just like, that's amazing. And then I got home and I was like, oh no, I've got no money. <laughs> <laughs> but that building block for me was... I don't need the money. It's not about the money. It's about giving and helping people and the money will come. And it did. I, I don't know how. And it's always, it's always managed to find this way to me. And now it's just about expanding, expanding on that and expanding on my abundance. But initially it was just about what can I do to give to then in return, eventually get what I deserve. Cause I truly believe in karma and you put enough good into the world. You're going to get good back regardless. 100% man I totally agree with everything you just said <laughs> literally like, even, like your story reminded me of a story and one of my mentors one told me like he said that like, he started this thing called Wealth Wednesday and he said mm-hmm. literally every single Wednesday if you it doesn't matter how much money you have in your bank account take some money even if it's like for a coffee or even like whatever amount it is it is not a specific number but every mm-hmm. Wednesday specifically Wealth Wednesday he called it he said try your best to buy something don't don't um you know use a coupon or anything else you know actually use your own money that you worked hard for use that mm-hmm. money to buy someone like buy a stranger something without them knowing it was you so mm-hmm. like buying a coffee and then telling the person pay for the next person behind me as well and and, and just just go don't don't mm-hmm. pay for someone's food or and then like wait there and see to see their face to see how they're going to react <laughs> don't do that you just said you pay for someone's food and then you go because the feeling mm. that we get internally in our brain, and it's like a psychology thing, the feeling yeah. that we get of just like paying for someone else, doing that random act of kindness, going away, thinking of you know, that curiosity of, I wonder, I wonder like whose day I just made. You know, I wonder who mm-hmm. I just helped. Not, not wanting to know who it was, but just thinking in your mind, like I, 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 I helped someone today and, and I feel so good. Mm. Um, I remember I did it once like at that time when he introduced the concept to me I was doing it every Wednesday from that day I, I, I don't it. do it anymore I stopped but that time when he taught me about it I started doing it every Wednesday and bro in London it's hard right because I was, th- I was trying to think of ways like some somehow here in London how do I pay for someone's thing without them knowing it's me because I can't pay for someone's thing they about behind me they're going to see me pay for their thing and I can't run right they've already seen me <laughs> how do I do it just start running out yeah so I thought like you know, how do I really do it so I thought you know what this thing there's McDonald's drive foods, right? Yes. <laughs> I don't eat McDonald's. <laughs> I don't eat or drink McDonald's, right? But I, at that time, when he told me, I had no choice. I was like, that's the only thing I could think of. Let me sneak in the drive through Let me literally pay for something. Like, let me just get like a, a coffee or something or some kind of a drink. And, um, yeah. and, let, me just, and let me just tell the person, what, what did the person behind me order? And they're like, oh, this many fries or whatever. I was like, could you just pay for, my, could you just pay for that car behind me? Uh, but don't tell them it was me. Just tell them someone, uh, someone ahead of them paid for their food today that's brilliant i and, love that and i, and I was like getting high man i was so happy i paid and i drove off and i was like yes i did it <laughs> and I was like, every day <laughs> just my coffee, just super happy every wednesday but the best thing for me was because i was doing it every wednesday at the same mcdonald's the, obviously mm. the same guy at the till that like, always he recognized me coming back every wednesday he's like you come every wednesday yeah. and you do this thing he loved it because he's like i really love what you're doing man that's like a really cool idea Yes. But he goes the other day, like, I got in trouble. Like, my manager said, like, I'm not allowed to do that. And I'm not allowed to take what you're doing. It's really cool. But he, I think he, the manager or someone found out. Oh, really? you like, yeah, you can't really do that. You can't pay for people's stuff. Well, I'm like, why not? It's like, you're still getting paid. You're still getting paid. <laughs> right? I'm just doing something kind for someone. But yeah. anyway, he's like, man, I love what you're doing. And he actually said to me, you know, the, you know the car that was behind you last week? It's one of the weeks. It's like, the car that was behind you last week the guy um, or the, the woman um, was like, oh, wow, maybe uh, it looks like there are still kind people in the world. She mm, said to mm, him. Mm. Because That's brilliant. For the food. And that, that for me, when the guy told me that kind of feedback, I was like, see, it works. You're like, I was like, yeah. you know that fulfillment, you know that? That's yeah. what I do, man. That's nothing beats it. Nothing beats that. No amount of money, nothing in the world. Give me a Ferrari, Lamborghini. I do not care. Like that mm. feeling for me is the best feeling. It's the feeling I get after every time I jump off the stage, after every event. Like just that's what makes me high. Hundred percent. I completely agree with you there. Completely agree but, with you. But bro, I want to ask you um, actually something. I want you to clarify for all the listeners. 
a little bit about hypnotherapy because like I already know like not too much but I know enough to kind of understand it but tell people how hypnotherapy is not about the um <laughs> please tell them because people when they hear the word hypnotherapy hypnotherapy they actually still think it's that bead and you have to stare look at my, yeah. look at my eyes not around yeah. the eyes look into my eyes you're under <laughs> you know they still think it's, it's that yeah it's, it's interesting a lot of people part of the first session that I do with people is to clear up myths. I, I always ask someone, what is your perception of hypnotherapy or hypnosis in general? Because a lot of people watch these films and they think hypnotherapy is sleep. And hypnosis is not sleep at all. It's not sleep. You will not fall asleep. All it is, is a really, really focused state of concentration. So have you ever driven your car and you've got, you've driven about 10 minutes and you're like, well, where did that 10 minutes just go? Have you ever done that? Yep. Yeah, that's called highway hypnosis. You're so focused on something else that your body takes over and drives that car. You don't have to think about it. It puts it into second. It puts it into third. It goes into fourth, fifth, whatever, and just drives. It knows how to drive. So that's one, one form of hypnosis. Another form is when you watch a film. Now, have you, what's, one, what's one of your favorite films? Um, the Pursuit of Happiness, man. Yeah. When you watch The Pursuit of Happiness, what did it make you, did it make you want to become that type of person. So Will Smith's yeah. character, did it make you want to become that person? Yeah, 100%. Yeah? So you were hypnotized by the film. You're watching it. You're so focused on that film that all those feelings, all those emotions are coming within you. And when you start to focus on them emotions, like, I, don't get me wrong, I watch a super, I love Avengers. I absolutely love the Avengers. You do. I'll, <laughs> I'll watch Iron Man and I'll come out and I'll be like, right, I want to be Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. And it's all it is is because I'm so focused and so concentrated. So what goes in, in that period of time, will stick in your mind. Now, you can't get stuck in hypnosis. Again, hypnosis isn't sleep. So when I, if I say to someone, all you, so basically all it is is based on my voice. So I can do this online. I can do this in front of people. It really doesn't matter. So I'll say to someone, for example, all you have to do is really focus your intention. Focus it solidly. Focus it on something in front of you. When I say the next, so, so now take a deep breath in. I'll get them to breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. When they breathe out, I will then say the word sleep and I'll maybe snap my fingers, clap my hands, whatever it is. And all that will do is, I will say, sleep and close your eyes. And I'll explain that first. All it is is you'll be really relaxed. And then when they're going deeper, I'll just, and it's the words that I use. So it's a specific um, type of words. There's different things that you can use in order to hypnotize people um, based on the words. And it's called, um, well, there's different types of things you can use, but it's called Ericksonian hypnot or hypnosis. And it's the, the godfather, Milton Erickson, who sort of was the, the modern founder of hypnotherapy, used it and allowed people to understand how they could just use it just through the power of their voice. And when I'm speaking to these people, they're slowly dripping, uh, drifting down deeper and deeper and deeper. And they may physically be drifting down like that. Some people may stay completely upright. Some people may lay down. It really doesn't matter. But essentially all it is, is your mind cannot differentiate between the dream world and reality. So for example, if you have a dream at night and you wake up and you're like, oh my God, that was the scariest thing. Or, oh my God, that was the most amazing thing. You genuinely thought you were there, correct? Yeah. Mm. So all you're doing is you're getting someone so, so focused and so calm and still that what I say, they are visualizing, whether that's they're feeling it, they're smelling it, they're tasting it, they're touching it, they're seeing it. The more vivid it is, the easier it becomes. Now, all you have to do is start to change the connections in the mind. Because on a conscious level, I could say, I want to be happy, I want to be rich. But if on a subconscious level, I'm like, but I don't want to be happy and I don't want to be rich. And it may not be as simple as that. And that's what hypnotherapy is. So for example, I had a client the other day. I'm not really going to explain too much because it's uh, co client confidentiality, but it was along the lines of he wanted to figure out why he felt so, why he felt a specific emotion. Um, and he, he was just not in a good place. And I, I figured it out. Well, we figured it out together because it's not down to me. I'm just like a guide. Imagine me as sort of like, um, if you look at like the scale electrics, I'm not the car, I'm the track. They've just got to follow the track. That's all they've got to do. And that's, that's all I, I, I need to do. And then, their own unique experience will come up from it. So I figured out that, it, or we figured out together that it was it was guilt, and that was what was holding him back. And it was something that happened years and years and years, like literally over fifteen years ago, that he's been holding on to that he didn't know about. So the idea is that you may cry in hypnotherapy, but it's good to cry. You may feel anger to then release it, and a lot of the time it can take one session, it can take four sessions. 
it really it really depends on the person. Now I've helped people stop smoking in one session, completely stop smoking after 30 years of smoking goes completely. But then other people it would take maybe two or three sessions because they need to understand the psychology between smoking. They need to understand uh, creating new habits. So it really is dependent on the person. And that's what I do. I, I assess it in the first session. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm cutting off from the conscious mind. So if you said right now, let's say you came to me as a client and you said, right, I'm just really struggling with my anxiety. I will use a lot of metaphors while you're being hypnotized. So I don't know if you saw the one the other day about the bus driver on my TikTok. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. So that's a great uh, metaphor for fear. Obviously, when you start to realize that you're the bus driver and you're in your own bubble, like those angry passengers can be shouting as loud as they want. They're not going to actually attack you. They're not going to touch you. They're going to shout though. As soon as you start going off course and you're, you're not doing what they want you to do, your mind gets scared and it's natural. It's the fight or flight response. So if someone came up to you and put a knife to you, you'd have either two things. If you could know how to defend from knives, you'd maybe fight back. If you probably were logical like me, I'd probably start running. <laughs> um, yeah. Or you would freeze. <laughs> it depends on the type of person. I would I would get out of there. I wouldn't even bother trying to fight them. <laughs> I'll run. But, I'll run. <laughs> <laughs> um, but essentially what you're doing is you're allowing the conscious mind to be cut off completely. So you're only speaking to the subconscious mind. So you may say something and I say, okay, when did you first feel this anxiety? Or when did you first feel the need to um, impress people, they'll say mm, age seven. They don't know why they say it age seven. They just know that it was age seven because your subconscious mind knows everything. Imagine your subconscious mind like a hard drive that has unlimited storage. So if I said to you right now, this is something that you, you haven't even thought of probably for a while. What color was your school uniform when you were in primary school? We never had school uniform, bro. Oh, did you not? No, not in primary school. We got to wear whatever we like. What about, what about secondary school? Secondary school, when I first started in year seven, my first year was purple. Okay, perfect. So today, did you ever think about your secondary school uniform? No. So it's just about changing your focus. That's there. That's lodged in your mind forever. You'll be 70 years old. If someone asks you that question, all you'll do is you'll go, mm, purple. Or yeah. it might be there straight away. Now, it's irrelevant knowledge, realistically, but it's there. Mm. So if you can learn happiness... Because happiness is a trait, it's, it's, a, it's a skill, it's a learnable skill. If you can learn confidence, if you can learn joy, if you can learn positivity, if you can learn motivation, you can become that person. So all it is is about unwiring the old program. So for example, if you have learned anxiety for 35 years, it's going to be very easy for you to feel anxiety tomorrow, correct? Yeah. So if you've learned happiness for 35 years, it's going to be very easy for you to understand happiness, right? Mm -hmm. True. True. So all it is, is about unwiring the old patterns, figuring out and going to the root cause of it. Now, I can cut off all the trees of the branch, uh, all the branches of a tree. But if I don't go to the root, that tree's still going to grow. Exactly. So I need to get to the root problem, help them understand it. Because I can say to them, I can say to someone right now, you need to be happy and motivated. And they're going to be like, well, yeah, I know that, but well, how do I do it? Exactly. Until they come up with the answer, nothing's going to change. And that's what my last TikTok video was about. <laughs> oh, really? It was, literally okay, about, <laughs> it was literally about that. It was about, you know, like we can't force or make people do anything. You know, mm -hmm. we can only uh, be like that guide you're talking about. We can only share with people our own experiences, but they got to figure mm -hmm. out themselves. They're the only mm -hmm. person that can change their own life through finding other people who are inspiring, motivational. Problems. But those people can't help them apart from giving give them that that little part of, just give them that energy that would help them and yeah. boost their confidence to find themselves. Mm. Specifically for that um, subject, although I'm vegan, so <laughs> you, oh, <yeah>. can, <laughs> you can give a man a fish and elite for a day. You can teach a man to fish and elite for a lifetime. And that's, a, again, another favorite quote of mine because although I'm vegan, I would never fish. How about mangoes? Um, <laughs> exactly, I'll fish for a mango. <laughs> give a man a mango or you can teach a man to mango <laughs> <laughs> you can teach a man to plant the mango tree exactly yeah perfect. that will feed him for a lifetime <laughs> exactly <laughs> so that, that's a per that's a perfect example and i'm going to use that from now on so thank you very much so yeah you can you can give a man a mango and then eat for that that 10 minutes of eating that <laughs> i can mango. already see the tiktok video come out <laughs> i'll watch it i'm gonna i'm gonna shout you out on it <laughs> <laughs> do it man um so yeah but if you plant those mango trees, you're going to be able to eat for a lifetime, realistically. Yeah. 
And that's one of the biggest things that I had to learn myself. So I was like, why can't someone just give me the money? Why can't someone just build the business for me? And I was really like, oh, why can't someone do it? Why can't they do this? I just want the help. Yes, so does everyone. Mm. And I had to come to terms with that myself. And don't get me wrong, I've literally been running up to people, trying to give them business plans, be like, help me, help me, help me, help me. And now my mentor, I don't ask him for anything, I ask him for advice and that's it. That's that's it, yeah. And I know he's he said to me in the past, he's like, when it gets to a scalable time, I'll come in and help you. And he said, but you need to learn to fish or you need to learn to plant the mango trees. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm planting the mango trees. I'm no expert in business. I'm still starting off. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to be calling the tax office saying, what the hell do I do with taxes? I don't know. That. Yeah, I don't same. know that. <laughs> same, man. We're both on the same boat, which is why when we connected, I loved it because we were, like, we we're both on the same mm. similar journey. Like you're doing your own thing. I'm doing my own thing, but we're still on that journey together of figuring business Definitely. life out. So yeah, Definitely. man, I love it. Love, bro we're coming up to the end of the show so at the end of my show i have this thing called the final four where i okay. ask four questions and it's basically yeah. you have like a sentence to answer but it's like the first thing that comes to your mind okay so I, love, I love quick fire. <laughs> let's go let's go so the first question i have for you is in one sentence what comes to your mind when you hear the word mindfulness mindfulness it's actually the opposite of mindfulness and not an empty mind but a still mind so not mind, like your mind isn't full. Your mm. mind is focused on one thing, whether that's compassion, whether that's love, whether that's freedom, whatever it is. And just, I've, I've said too much, haven't I? <laughs> no, no, it's fine, it's fine. But I love so, it. Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> I, I love to talk when it, when it comes to this type of stuff. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it's just allowing yourself to be very still in a moment and just focusing on what you're doing. When you're drinking your drink, just drink it mindfully. Little things like that, the more you can do that in your day, the more of a mindful person you become because you're practicing mindfulness. Mm, I love that. So true. I love that you just said, like, is mindfulness is not actually your mind full. It's actually empty your mind. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, it's so powerful. I love it. I love it. Okay, second question is, what one movie or video or documentary would you recommend all the listeners that they got to have to go and watch? Because oh, in some ways oh. impacted you positively in your life. That's impacted me positively. See, videos are slightly different. If, if I want to go movie, I'm going to say Tony Robbins, I'm not your guru because I love the what he does because that's what I want to do. So for me yeah. personally, if you want to be a speaker, you want to help a lot of people, highly, highly recommend that. And then just a video alone, it's going to have to be Prince EA's video about the school system. Oh, yeah. And how about that. you can change. You can be someone completely different. You, you don't have to follow the, the, the generic route. You don't have to go down and um, get all your grades at school, but come, uh, go to college, go to university, become a lawyer. You don't have to do that. We all learn in different ways, and it's okay to be unique. I wasn't, a, I wasn't good at school. I was, I was very okay, like completely average. But... That wasn't my way of learning. My way of learning is very similar to yourself, which is watching videos, which is getting out and doing it. And that's how I learned. And I don't personally learn from just sitting in a classroom and listening to a teacher. Mm. Same. I'm the same, man. You know, which one video, just to add, since you've mentioned pre Prince EA, the one video what? that I love of him is, you know, that one he talks about in the prison, you know, you know being, in the, being in the prison, yes, yes, Howard yes, Dohuni. Yes. I think it's, it's, is it Howard something? Howard Dohuni or someone who's talking about that story of the guy in prison. Um, they oh, Houdini. Him. Yeah, Houdini. That's it, Houdini. That's it. That video was so powerful. How like we all we all are trapped in the mind when when the answer is yeah. in front of us. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Super, super powerful, man. I love his video. Also, also, I just I just want to add one more thing as well. Is I don't listen to one video. I listen to so many. So that's that's why my mind's sort of going because there's like there's so many different types of videos like Wayne Dyer. Um, Tony Robbins, Joe Dispenza, Greg Braid and Bruce, like all these people, like there's, there's just, it's such a, for me, especially because I've watched so many, if you looked at my YouTube time, it would be literally like millions of hours. Like my, I know my audible time alone is like over like 30, 40 days or something crazy like that. <laughs> Madness. But that's good, man. That's, that's how we mm. both learn, right? That's how, yeah. that's how we seek knowledge. And that's actually why we seek knowledge, but we, we, we seek it, we learn we change ourselves, we take action on it, but then we share it. Other people don't share mm -hmm. it. They're stuck in the sharing part. They're stuck yeah. in the, 
let me just learn, 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 and become mm-hmm. a guru in my head and, and not do anything with the knowledge. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the trap that people fall into. But it's, it's, I love it, man. It's really good, really good. Um, okay, third question is um, now which one book? Because I know there's loads of books that has changed your life. Yeah. Which one, if you were to pick the first one to for everyone mm-hmm. to go and read, what would that one be? This is such a close battle because I've listened to. There's two books that. I would recommend to everyone. I'll say the first one. I will chuck in the second one just because I just, there's such a do hard it, battle. Do it, do it. But I, I noticed you said this as well when we spoke on the live, how to win friends to influence people. Yeah. That stopped me being such an anxious person because it taught me how to be interested in people. It taught me how to conversate with people. I couldn't hold a conversation, but I learned how to have a conversation with someone. I learned that you had to be interested in someone. I was never told you had to be interested in someone. People just assume that you should know that. I didn't know that at all. I'd, I'd walk into a conversation, start talking about myself because I didn't because I was so nervous. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know to ask them about their family life, about their passions, about their hobbies. So, how to win friends and influence people? The best book and is timeless, one hundred percent timeless. No matter how old or how young the human race is, that is always going to be such a powerful book. I truly believe. And then, Think and Grow Rich is my second favorite book. It's such a powerful book. I learned so much from that, and that's the power of uh, belief. 100% about the power of belief when you can really, really get on a level of the vibration, especially and in spiritual terms, you can get on that vibration. You can start to attract things into your life. I love it, man. Those are my top three in, in my top three as well. Cause the first one was the first one. That, the reason why I said top three is only because of the order I read it in. Um, mm-hmm. Rich dad, poor dad was just before those two. So Rich dad, uh, okay. was the first book I read that completely changed my mindset in terms of yeah. just everything, money, business, the word mindset and like just everything mm-hmm. that's where personal growth started for me out of curiosity was that from when you were doing network marketing yeah that that's because of that encouraged? yeah because all people that do network marketing i've noticed that is a book that everyone's encouraged to read and i've noticed a lot of people only because of that one page in it that talks about the quadrant and how cash that quadrant. Quadrant, yeah, yeah the cash flow quadrant relates to business and life right Mm-hmm. And it's about the rich and the poor and the poor mindset and the rich mindset. So they use that in the, in the companies because of the fact that it's all to do with leverage and teamwork. And yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, you, one becomes two, becomes four, becomes eight, becomes 16, becomes eight. You know, you just dub that doubling, compounding um, kind yeah. of concept. Yeah. That's what the book teaches mm-hmm. about a lot. That's why they use that book in, in that in the industry. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, because because I've only ever, I, when I used to present the opportunity for network marketing, we used to use the cash flow quadrant in... Same. Um, part of it but I'd never read the book and I still haven't I've, only, I've listened to the audio book once but we used to use it and I remember so many people have recommended that book to me yeah and the reason why they used it like I said is because that book honestly that one page is what every almost every network marketing company uses <laughs> <laughs> every single one like when we used to show this a presentation and by hand on paper which yeah. is always, I, I used to love it same. I used to love drawing the line E F like 99% of the world are here 1% are here which one do you want to be where do you want to be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> same lines every company we all taught the same thing <laughs> Um, and that's, that's why, like at the time, I was doing some. I, like, I, I completely was doing what the opposite of what most of the people in the company were doing. And I was one of the mm. first people in our company at the time where, that was using social media and marketing to attract people to me. And some of my oh, mentors were shocked. How like, the hell are you getting people to come to our events? And they're strangers because I was doing all cold market because I did my hot and my, you know my hot and my warm market. The people that I know and that love me and that trust me and that know me, they they all said no. They all said, mm-hmm. yeah. they all said, what I'm doing is never going to work. It's a waste of my time. And that was everybody. Family, so you thought friends. outside the box. But I thought outside the box because I was following other mentors online and they were saying, so they were making so much success from social media. I was like, I need to get on this social media thing and learn how mm-hmm. they have to do this. That's where my psychology journey came in. Like now I can, like I tell people, right? I can, I can get someone to trust me like in one conversation by text message. Mm-hmm. my text message something that most people cannot do because they say there's no emotions in text messages yeah, yeah but yeah. there is if you know how to use certain curious words and phrases and yeah. emojis certain things mm-hmm. does help to add a little bit of emotion to a text but it's just agree. Emoji, man. It's certain things you can say that really makes a difference because because of the way we read things Mm-hmm. definitely definitely yeah, man. that's another topic though. I love I love talking about that <laughs> that's so we'll have to do a number one one day <laughs> yeah 100% man honestly for sure okay the last question Max before we end the show is if you can spend a few hours of your life to learn from someone's wisdom I pretty much probably know who this person will be for you <laughs> but 
But if you can spend some of your time or like a day with someone that you honestly love and whether they're dead or alive, it could be anyone, yeah. who would that one person be and why? You know what? You're going to be surprised, actually. You're going to be really surprised. Because it's not totally dead or alive, life. you're going to pick someone else now. No, no, it's, it's interesting. He's alive, Joe Dispenza. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Like, I binge watch like Tony Robbins got me into everything and I'm forever grateful for what he's done but my work especially is focused on the subconscious mind and I truly believe that we have the power to completely heal ourselves um we have the power to completely impact and change our lives we have the power to completely revolutionize the world through meditation through self-hypnosis and Joe Dispenza uses science-based uh, facts to prove um spirituality so where I don't know have you heard of um, Abraham Hicks? Yeah, I have. I have a friend of mine yeah. addicted. Yeah. So Abraham, so obviously it's, um, it's Esther and Jerry Hicks. They're very, very spiritual. And they use the terms, they will use the terms like vibration, but there's no science to back it. Now, don't get me wrong. I still love their stuff. And I really agree and resonate with a lot of their stuff. But Joe Dispenza is putting the science behind all the stuff that they say and basically proving, look, if you can slow down your brain waves. You can visualize something, and this is why I use hypnosis specifically. Um, if you can visualize something so vividly and you can see it, feel it, smell it, taste it, touch it, that's when it can truly start to manifest in your life. When it starts to become familiar, and this is what he teaches, if you start to change your habits, and one of his, my favorite books from him is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, and it's about unlearning who you were. So let's say, for example, I was a very, very anxious and depressed person. It's about unlearning anxiety and depression completely like forgetting it and rewiring yourself for a, for a, a future that you want to create a future that you know is who you want to be. How do you get up from your meditation? That's why I meditate so much. Who do I want to be when I get up from my meditation? I want to be someone who is disciplined. I want to be someone who is motivated. I want to be someone who is happy. I want to be someone who, that's why I have all my um, affirmation boards around my room and all, all the words of positivity because I want to inspire myself every morning. When I wake up, I'm not sitting there going, Oh, hope something bad doesn't happen. Today. I'm waking up going, I'm amazing. I'm going to have a great day. I know today's going to be powerful. I'm making my day powerful. And I'll go out and do a run or something like that because I know that if I can start my morning right, and this is what I learned from Joe Dispenza, is I can change my life. All And I, I would absolutely love it. Again, I, I've tried to get in contact with him. I've literally sent him, uh, I sent him a lottery ticket. It's I was like, happen. right. Yeah, I sent him a lottery ticket. And I said, I wrote a letter I was like, I don't want to just send him an email. I want to try and make it a little bit more um, extensive. And I, I wrote him a letter, uh, put a lottery ticket in there and said, if the lottery ticket wins, I hope you can expand your business. Uh, I really want to connect. And I, I never heard anything back. And I, I said, again, it will get to the point where I know that I'm going to get to sort of, eventually, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm going to just a normal envelope. Like, yeah. Uh, in a, in a uh, I can't even remember. I can't even remember what envelope it was. You know, one thing, I, I went to an event once and someone did the same thing to the guy that was speaking on stage mm-hmm. and he shared the story. He said, you know, the one thing, the advice he gave that I remembered from that day, if I ever want to reach out to him. Brown envelopes. No, not even brown. Because everybody okay. uses white and brown. He said, you either yeah. put it in a gold envelope uh-huh. or a red one. The red one That's- is, well, sometimes the red one don't work as well because sometimes it's, they feel like it's like a Valentine's or something like that. But the yeah. gold one, when they see a gold That's envelope, suddenly it's like, oh my gosh, I want something. So they go, mm-hmm. and pick, they pick, people pick up that gold letter, letter first. I want to open that first. So that could be your letter. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. With, with that person, yeah. That's super- such a good idea, actually. That's such but a good try idea. Try that next time. Do, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> try with the gold letter, man. I, I, well, I, I said, it's going to happen, man. I, 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 all the people that I know I'm going to work with in the future, I've already sent them a message on Instagram just to, not, not for my sake, this is to prove to people um, when I'm 30 years old that if you have a desire for something so much, it will 100% happen. And I'm not just going to say I've messaged, like I've messaged, uh, I'd probably say about seven or eight people that I know I 100% want to work with and will work with. And I want people to sort of like that confirmation of it is possible. You've just got to have that burning. And when I say burning, you've got to have that burning desire. Like my life's going to go my way and it's going to go the way that I say it's going to go. And that's, that's yeah. if you've got that desire for life, that outlook for life, then nothing will stop you. No matter how many road bumps you hit, now, no matter how many mountains you've got to climb, you will reach the, the your greatest success of whatever it is that you want to achieve. One million percent, bro. I freaking love it. I love it, man. Dude, 
if anybody listening wants to go and connect with you and learn more about the awesome wisdom you've been sharing this whole episode how can they like reach out to you how can they learn more about hypnosis how can they work with you like what platforms do you live on the most share it with them and guys i really hope you go and connect with this dude because he's amazing he loves mangoes he's super positive <laughs> <laughs> He's an amazing guy, like with so much positive vibes. Honestly, his content would just keep you pumped every day. So make sure you follow him on what he's about to share with you. No, I really appreciate that, mate. I really do appreciate that, Steve. Um, so I'm on Instagram, TikTok. They're my main two platforms. I am on YouTube as well. I've posted hundreds of, like literally 250 videos on YouTube. Um, but it's just not taking the traction. But yeah, the main one and all platforms is M-A-X-I-M 1111-O-N. So it's Maximilian. But instead of I L L I, it's eleven eleven, sort of like my spiritual alignment numbers. Um, and then my website is maxhypnotherapy.com. Very simple. Um, if you can't, if you can't figure it out from the um, to the Instagram and stuff like that, just go onto my website. All my links are over there. And then yeah, just just go find me, send me a message because I always do a free thirty minute hypnotherapy session with someone just to introduce them to hypnotherapy because. I always understand that not every therapist will work with someone and will connect on a very good level with them. And I won't work with absolutely everyone because I know we have to connect on a very good level. If our rapport isn't there, and that's my job, that's my job. So that's not down to the person. If, if you feel anxious or something, that's, that's down to me to do that. But if the connection isn't there and you don't believe that I can help you, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to charge someone that I don't believe is going to get the value that I know I can give someone. But everyone so far that I've worked with has got gotten results so I always say results speak louder than um, than words so that's why I put a lot of testimonials everywhere because I don't want to scream from the mountaintops that I'm really good I want people to say he can help you and he can impact your life so yeah head over to my website find me on social media connect with me send me a message if you've got a question send me a message I'm happy to answer I'll always every message I answer as long as it's not asking me to send them some money or something like that (laughs) 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 or or something stupid like that but I will always answer a, a, a genuine question or if you just want to connect you want to say hello you want some inspiration I'm more than happy to send you a voice note whatever just connect reach out and I'll do the same to you awesome man awesome bro thank you so much for being on the show with me man I'm super grateful that you spent this time with me I'm grateful that we're connected I'm looking forward for after this quarantine time right now is over so we can hopefully one day actually meet maybe and yeah, I can come down to the beach in in Eastbourne and chill do it's some in summer do you some exercise and you know you, you can 100% we can we can sort something out man for sure man definitely now I appreciate yeah. you having me on as well Sadiq I really do appreciate it I'm very grateful no worries, man. No worries. Um, take care, dude. I will keep in touch, obviously. And um, yeah, man, thanks for sharing the wisdom, man. I'll catch you soon. Much love, brother. Have a good one. Take care, man. If you're still there, I just want to say a massive thank you for your attention and your time. It really means a lot to me. Please do me one favor and subscribe to this podcast, share it with your friends and leave a rating on whichever platform you're listening to this. It would honestly mean the world to me. Thank you so much once again. I hope that this episode brought value and inspiration into your life and I'll see you guys next week.